morning. Nice to see everyone. Aaron, a happy Thanksgiving. Very good. Uh, let's take a moment to stand and welcome one another in the Lord's peace at this time. Ordinarily, I would tell you what our opening hymn is, but I don't know because Florence didn't give me a worksheet, so I'm leaving it up to Diana or Gina. Uh, the opening hymn is number 925, We Sing the Mighty Power of God, number 925. The mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad, and built the lofty skies. We sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines forth. the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And as we come together today, it is fitting that uh, we do so around the table of the Lord because when we think of the word Eucharist, the word Eucharist comes from the Greek language, which means thanksgiving. And so every time we gather around the table of the Lord, we should be reminded of how we are giving thanks to God for all that he does for us, not just one day a year, but every moment of our lives we give him thanks and it, for those times that we have failed to be grateful to the Lord for his many ways of blessing us the many ways of sharing his love with us we ask him for his pardon and mercy and a greater uh, awareness of our need for gratitude Lord have mercy Christ have mercy Lord have mercy May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. And now let us pray. Thank you. Father all-powerful, your gifts of love are countless and your goodness is infinite. As we come before you on Thanksgiving Day with gratitude for your kindness, we ask that you open our hearts to have concern for every man, woman, and child, so that we may share your gifts in loving service. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. And now, bless the God of all, 
who has done wondrous things on earth, who fosters people's growth from their mother's womb and fashions them according to his will. May he grant you joy of heart and may peace abide among you. May his goodness towards us endure in Israel to deliver us in our days. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship 
with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord be with each of you. And now let us listen attentively to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten persons with leprosy met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. As they were going, they were cleansed, and one of them, realizing that he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? And then he said to him, stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So nice to see all of you here today. And I'm assuming the turkey's already in the oven if you're having an early meal or the ham or whatever it is you're having. Um, I'm going to try to be brief here. <coughs> Excuse me, whatever that was. Um, I gave Florence the week off. She approached me, when was that, Kevin? Earlier in the fall, I guess, probably around October. And she, asked, she said something to me that I can relate with having been a musician in my former life and never getting any holidays off. And she says, you know, I've been playing the organ and directing the choir and I have never had Thanksgiving or Christmas off, and I was wondering, and I says, which one? <laughs> and so she went to Kentucky to visit a brother, is it, I think? Yeah, she left Sunday after Mass, and she won't be returning till tomorrow. So uh, I says, no, I understand what it's like not to have a day off. So uh, I says, you're more than entitled. So Thank the good Lord for Kevin uh, that she's been grooming him and you're doing quite well there. Thank you very much. As we know, today is a day of national thanksgiving for the blessings and protection that God has given us, for our democratic government and the prosperity we enjoy, for our freedom of speech and religion, and for the generosity and goodwill of our people. The winter of 1610 at Jamestown, Virginia had reduced a group of 409 settlers to 60. That's six zero. The survivors prayed for help without knowing when or how it might come. When help arrived in the form of a ship filled with food and supplies from England, a Thanksgiving prayer meeting was held to give thanks to God. President Abraham Lincoln, in the midst of the Civil War, established Thanksgiving Day as a formal holiday to express our thanks to God, and he uh, named the very last Thursday of every, thank uh, every November to be the day that we celebrate Thanksgiving. 
President George Washington issued the first National Thanksgiving Proclamation in 1789, and in 1941, Congress passed the official proclamation declaring that Thanksgiving should be observed as a legal holiday the fourth Thursday of each November. And so that's where we are right now. Uh, and one other first that I just heard yesterday listening to NPR radio, who was the first president to issue a pardon to the Thanksgiving turkey? I thought that was something that just always was. When was the first turkey pardon and given amnesty? Hmm? No? Which one? Yeah, it was, it was the first President Bush. That's how recent it is. Exactly right. Uh, no, it wasn't Truman, I'm sorry. Uh, but it was the first President Bush, so there we go. Um, what should we be grateful for? Well, we hear the readings. Sirach is that um, Jewish school instructor giving us that ba basic background of gratitude to God for everything. Paul, in that first letter of his to Corinthians, I love that particular section, uh, how Paul is giving thanks to the people of the Corinthian church for their growth in uh, and knowledge of God in their lives. And the gospel passage, I better lift this up closer so somebody says they can't hear me. Can everybody hear me now? Is there anybody who can't hear me? Well, that's a dumb question if you can't hear me. You wouldn't hear me asking. <laughs> Just check it to see who's awake and who's not. Um, we're familiar with the uh, ten lepers, one being a Samaritan, uh, the other being Jewish, and the only one that... Uh, recognized the need for gratitude for his healing was the foreigner, the Samaritan. Giving thanks to God is easy when everything is going well in our lives. But when the walls start to crumble, maybe when sickness starts to creep into our lives, uh, maybe when unemployment, uh, when one of our kids or another family member goes awry, it gets a little difficult then to find any reason to give thanks to God. The other evening uh, at the ministerial Thanksgiving service at Paintertown Church, uh, Pastor Justin Judy, the new kid in town just below us here a couple of streets, uh, he was the uh, t speaker that evening. And one of the cute stories that he conveyed to us brought back memories of when I was newly ordained and doing my usual nursing home visits. And Pastor Justin said, this one day he was doing his visits, and as he was visiting the individual whose name was Mike, Mike is just beaming from ear to ear and happy as all heck, and Justin says, Mike, what's going on today? You, you, you just look fabulous, you're happy about it. He's a, Oh, today's the greatest day of my life. He says, you wouldn't believe how good I feel right now. And Justin says, would you mind sharing with me what, what you're so excited about, what you're happy for? He says, Pastor, you would not believe how thankful I am for what has happened today to me. Well, what was it? What was it? He says, well, I haven't been able to go to the bathroom for a week, and this morning I finally pooped. <laughs> And the whole church is kind of broke down in laughter. But that's the reality of it. We, there's so many things that we sometimes take for granted, something as simple as a bathroom function, that we don't realize how miserable we feel when we are not doing that. Um, I visited a lady one time, and she had all but two teeth in her, uh, missing. Only two teeth remained in her mouth. And... Uh, it was near Thanksgiving, and I asked her if she had anything to be thankful for, and I'm figuring she'd say, well, this nice facility that I'm warm and always a good meal. But she says, I'm thankful uh, for my two teeth. Why would you be thankful? She says, well, God kept them just right so that they're both one on top of the other, and I'm able to chew my food. It's not like one's here and one's there. Uh, little kid in school one time, uh, the teacher came around and asked 
um, to draw a picture of something they're thankful for. And as the teacher's walking around, looking at what the kids are drawing, she sees one kid drew a picture of a hand. And so when the kids were done and they're all explaining why they drew what they drew, she calls this young fella up and he holds it up and he says, it's a hand. And so the teacher says, can we guess whose hand it is? He says, sure, you can try. He said, so one of them says, is it the hand of God? No. And they're going through this whole list of things. And she says, I give up. Whose hand is it? And he says, it's your hand, teacher. My hand? Well, why is that? And he says, because you're always encouraging us with a pat on the back with your hand, or when one of us falls down on a playground, your hand is there to pick us up. And so many things that your hand does to help us along the way and to learn what school is all about and what life is all about. And the teacher was taken aback because something as simple as that that she didn't even think about as important, here a little toddler recognized the importance of the hand. So whenever we are down and out and stop and think, what's there to be thankful for? There's a lot that we can be thankful for. Not to pick on the younger generation because us older folks sometimes complain whenever we don't get our big boy toys, uh, whenever we're ready for them. You might not get the latest electronic gadget for Christmas that you want, but we still have a lot to be thankful for. This land, um, our freedom, as I mentioned in the opening remarks, our faith, the Eucharist, our redemption and salvation that gives us eternal life with the Lord forever in heaven. And so today, as we pause with family and friends and however we do choose to celebrate, we give thanks to God for everybody that God has ever put into our lives. We give thanks to God for all those people who have handed on the faith of the apostles to us. And we pray that we be willing to live our lives in such a way that we continue to hand that faith on to future generations. We give thanks for family and most definitely give thanks for the food and the drink that we will be celebrating with later today. Have a beautiful day. God bless you. Let us pray. The response is, Lord, bless your people. For the church, that Christ might lead his people to be grateful to God, let us pray, Lord, Lord bless, bless your, your people. people. For people and nations affected by natural disasters, that the Holy Spirit might inspire generosity in those who can help them, let us pray, Lord, Lord bless, bless your, your people. people. For all who are imprisoned, that Christ might fill them with his hope and love, let us pray, Lord, Lord bless, bless your, your people. people. For our faith community, that God might move our hearts to be generous with the many blessings he has showered upon us, let us pray. Lord, bless, bless your, your people. people. For the intentions of this Mass, for Dot Babio, and for the people of the parish, let us pray. Lord, Lord bless, bless your, your people. people. For all the dead and those who will die this day, and during this Mass we remember Carmen Grandi, that Christ may welcome them into paradise where they will give thanks and praise to God for all eternity. Let us pray. Lord, Lord bless, bless your people. people. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. We pray. Lord, bless your people. For the souls of your loved ones whose names are written in a book of remembrance, we pray. Lord, bless your people. For the safety of those who are traveling during this holiday season, we pray. Lord, bless your people. For the safety of our men and women in the armed services, who this day many of them will not be with family or friends, but serving their nation and each of us so that we can continue living the freedoms that we enjoy, we pray. Lord, bless your people. And for those whom the Lord may be calling to serve as a priest, brother or sister, deacon, or other related ministry within the life of the church, that they be willing to follow the call of the Lord in a spirit of generosity, we pray. Lord, bless your people. 
We thank you, Lord, for everything and for those times that we take things for granted. We give you thanks for those as well. We make this prayer in your holy name and united with the name of Mary. Amen. Amen. The presentation hymn is number 959, For the Fruits of All Creation, number 959. Father, from whose hand we have received generous gifts, so that we might learn to share your blessings in gratitude, accept these simple gifts of bread and wine, and let the perfect sacrifice of Jesus draw us closer to all our brothers and sisters in the human family. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. You lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For you have entrusted to us the great gift of freedom, a gift that calls forth responsibility and commitment to the truth that all have a fundamental dignity before you. In Jesus, through his death and resurrection, we find our ultimate redemption, freedom from sin and every blessing. And so with hearts full of love, we join the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory as together we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself. 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying to them, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying to them, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, St. Regis, and with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Lawrence, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people whom you have gained for your own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you this day. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children who are scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we ask that you give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the opportunity now to pray in the words that Jesus gives to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And now we take the time to move around and share the Lord's peace with each other. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take Behold, this truly is Jesus. Behold, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are those who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. The communion hymn is number 933, How Great Thou Art, number 933. The blood of Christ.
send our hope. To thee do we cry for banished children of thee. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in his valley of tears. Turn then, O most gracious advocate, thy eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our road south, show unto us Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness of the spirits of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Just let it rest against you. Thou, O Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. 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 Let us pray in this celebration, O Lord our God, you have shown us the depths of your love for all your children. Help us, we pray, to reach out in love to all your people, so that we may share with them the good things of time and eternity. <clears throat> we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us bow our heads as we invoke the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. Amen. <clears throat> May he let his face shine upon us and show us his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance towards us and grant us his peace. Thank you. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks. Have a blessed day with all your family and friends. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. The closing hymn is number 956, Now Thank We All Our God, number 956. Oh! 